That was some good pastrami. Good call, Josh. It's good, right? Have you had it? Yeah. How it's great. Feel? Look at that blue. That's it's friggin', so That's high praise for my mate. <laughs> Morning. Another day, another real world test. Today, we're doing it on the Apple iPhone 14 Pro. And if you can't tell by the aggressively beautiful weather, I'm not in New York City right now. I'm in Los Angeles. And so, we'll explore around here a bit while we test out the phone, as per the usual. But, first things first. Coffee. Check. And welcome to the Andaz Hotel. Now, Andaz in Hindi means personal style, and so each Andaz hotel around the world, which is owned by Hyatt, by the way, tries to kind of have a unique vibe particular to that hotel. And this one in particular has some pretty interesting history. Now, originally opened in 1963, it became popular during the late 60s and early 70s by touring rock groups because of its close proximity to popular rock clubs here like Whiskey A Go Go. Bands like The Who, Led Zeppelin, The Rolling Stones, maybe you've heard of some of these, they all stayed here regularly. Now, Led Zeppelin once rented as many as six floors for their entourage here and reportedly drove a motorcycle through the halls. Room 1015 is where Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones once dropped a TV out of the window in 1972, and Keith Moon of The Who reportedly did the same. Jim Morrison of The Doors lived here for a while, so did Little Richard, and Elton John stayed here in the 1970s when he first came to the US. And scenes from Almost Famous that were talking about this hotel back in that time were actually filmed here. Because of all this, it eventually got the nickname Riot House because at the time it was called Hyatt House and it was a play on that. It kind of makes a little sense. While we're here though, let's talk a little bit about the iPhone 14 Pro's design. And now that design, well, it's, it's very similar. In fact, if you look at these two devices side by side, you'd have a hard time telling the difference right away. And we have that same matte glass on the back, which I've always liked. It just gives it a more premium feel compared to the non-pro varieties, as well as the stainless steel frame around the outside that is flat. Now for colors this year, we have gold, silver, space black, and deep purple, which is the one that I have here. And it's been getting some flack online for not being purple enough, kind of seeming a little too gray. And I get what they're saying. In some lights, it's a lot less purple, and in other lights, it's a lot more purple, like daylight, for example. But I, I like it. I think it's subtle, and it's purple enough for me. Now, regardless of whether you like the purple or not, you probably want to keep your iPhone looking as new as possible, as long as possible. So, that brings us to today's sponsor, Casetify. Now, for Casetify's newest iPhone 14 Impact case series, they engineered a new twister design using their revolutionary technology called EcoShock that was inspired by tree roots to evenly distribute tension to avoid cracking. With their Ultra Impact series having drop protection up to 11 and a half feet, a 20% increase from the last model. The intertwined layering of that twister design also provides superior abrasion resistance, so when it falls and inevitably slides across the floor, it won't get scratched up, and has been dropped over 130 times to ensure that the protection won't wear off either. They also have prints and artist collabs, as well as a custom builder that you can use online, and they have a built-in MagSafe magnet to ensure that they work well with all your MagSafe accessories. And lastly, they do all of this in a super thin case, which I appreciate, and it's made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials, and are even partially made from upcycled phone cases. It's a phone case made from other cases. So meta. If you want to check their cases out, head to the link in the description below. And thanks again to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Needless to say, this is as much as you can open the windows. Now it just, that just lets some air in. But the window doesn't open. Thanks, Keiths. Okay, now I'm starving, so it's time to grab some food and also say hi to some friends of mine that are nearby. These guys. We're here with Joshua Vergara, good friend of mine. Hello. Um, 
Where is here, Josh? <laughs> uh, well, and why hey, have you brought me here? Well, I I need to have people eat good stuff when they come to my area. Which Man, is not, speak in my language. Technically, not really my area, but this is LA. <laughs> I live not far from LA. <laughs> yeah, as far as I'm concerned, this is all your area. Yeah, you just yeah, say I live in LA. It could be anywhere. So, yeah. off Sunset Boulevard, there's a place called Daughter's Deli, one of the best places to get pastrami in the city. I Sorry, think it's I interesting that you brought the New Yorker home of Katz's Deli, true, all of the other Jewish delis, famous for pastrami, to a pastrami place. And I will admit that it, I've never had Katz. And well, on, we can be the judge. And it's not even, <laughs> yeah, and it's not even going to be like, what's better, this or that. It's more like, no, no, they're no. all great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, this one, this is just, awesome. just to your point, good food. That's yeah, all. good all right. food. Yeah. Daughter's Deli, Sunset Boulevard. Let's get try it out. One of the longest running delis in all of LA is called Langer's. The daughter of Langer opened up this spot. Uh, Langer's is awesome. It's just not in a very good area. That's why we come here. <laughs> That's some good pastrami. Good call, Josh. It's good, right? Have you had it? Yeah. How it's great. Feel? Look at that blue. That's so weird. That's high praise for my mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, while we're here, Let's talk about the display on the new iPhone 14 Pro. Now that display is still 6.1 inches, but it has thinner bezels by just a tiny bit, which is nice, because that's always nice. And it can get up to 2000 nits of peak brightness compared to the 1200 nits on the 13 Pro, which I could already see just fine outside. But now, this is just ridiculous how clear it is, even in direct light. The display is also 120 hertz, but unlike the iPhone 13 Pro, it can drop down to one hertz or refresh the image on the screen once per second instead of 10 hertz or 10 times a second with the iPhone 13 Pro. And this, according to Apple at least, is why they can finally do an always on display. This basically lets you see widgets that bring information to the lock screen, like your fitness rings, various weather ones, calendar ones, to-do lists, and the like. You can also adjust the clock and font for the clock in the middle. Apple also does something kind of clever where they can take an image that you use and dim it, but still keep its color. Then the rest of the AOD works like a normal lock screen does. So notifications show up at the bottom as is the usual now for this version of iOS. And it actually is more useful of an AOD to me than I've seen because that compared to just an icon and a number like a lot of others do, this is just, it's just more useful. And if you wanted to, you could even allow it to show the entire notification content and read some of them at least right there without waking the phone. Either. They can also automatically guess the subject of a photo that you set for the lock screen and put the clock sort of behind them. If you want that effect, you also have to turn off those widgets as it doesn't work with those on. And sometimes it can be kind of hit or miss, honestly, but it's a clever idea. It's just, it's a nice touch. Look at this fancy new car. Okay, and we're here around Sunset in the once aptly named Sunset Park. Or at least that's what it was called in 1912 when it was built. But it eventually would be renamed to the Will Rogers Memorial Park after the famous vaudeville performer and actor of the 20s and 30s, who over his career traveled the world three times over, made 71 films, 50 of which were silent films, and even had over 4,000 nationally syndicated newspaper columns. During the height of his career in the mid-1930s, he was the highest paid Hollywood film actor. He was also just well-liked frankly. And during that time, he kind of just represented the everyman, coming up from nothing and making it in Hollywood. But while we're here in the park, let's talk about the cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro. So firstly, we have a new main camera. It is 48 megapixels instead of the usual 12 megapixels. But regardless of pixel size, it's a larger sensor. The idea is that the larger the pixel size, the more light it can let in and the better low light performance and dynamic range we should get. And that plus their new image processing software that they call their photonic engine, supposedly gives the main camera up to two times better low light. Now we also have a new ultra wide camera that is also still 12 megapixels, but it is a one by 2.55 inch sensor instead of a one by 3.4 inch sensor. So each of those pixels again will be larger, so better low light. And then we have that three times telephoto sensor, which is the same as far as I can tell as last year's model. It's a one by 3.4 inch, one micron size pixel sensor. But because of the newer software processing, that photonic engine, as Apple calls it, it supposedly gets better light as well. Now, besides that, you'll notice that there's a two times option here in the viewfinder, and we don't have an extra camera. Instead, what happens is it takes a 12 megapixel crop out of the center of that 48 megapixel main camera. And this gives you a two times 
optical zoom. And now for video, we can take the cinematic mode, which is their sort of like portrait mode video. It's meant to mimic like a faster aperture, larger sensor camera, like gives a lot more bokeh, which is the blur between the subject and the foreground or the subject in the background. And we can do that now in 4K instead of 1080p. And the cinematic mode still works the same. It's a kind of a novel concept. At faster apertures or the lower number, it tends to look a little fake to me, but it's okay at some of the higher ones. And I guess the nice thing about it too is that you can change the aperture after the fact in, and even completely remove it, also change the focus on the subject as well. But the truth is for me that these larger sensors, and especially now with this even larger sensor, you get enough kind of natural bokeh if you get close enough to a subject anyway. And I kind of prefer the look of that, but maybe that's just me. And now we also have action mode for stabilization. This limits it to 1080p, but it severely crops the sensor. And as such, it needs a lot more light to get the same brightness out of the image. But at the benefit of giving you even more electronic stabilization meant to mimic an action camera. And for the most part, it, it does a pretty good job. All right, so we're at the TCL Chinese Theater, and thanks to TCL, we're actually gonna get to do something a lot of people don't. <laughs> watch a movie from their private suite. Not the worst place to watch a movie, right guys? Yep. No. Yep. So we're on Hollywood Boulevard. We're in the Shrine of Cinema, and I think we're all about to go to church. So, let's go to the church of Bowie. I'll see you guys in two and a half hours, or two hours and 20 minutes. Enjoy the film, we'll see you later. Thank you so much for being out here tonight. Now this theater was originally called Grauman's Chinese Theater, but is now branded as the TCL Chinese Theater since they purchased the naming rights in 2013. But it was originally opened in 1927 by Sid Grauman, a theater mogul at the time, wanting to build his dream theater after building two others in the neighborhood that did well. It was opulently designed with a Chinese theme, of course, and had imported temple bells, pagodas, stone heaven dogs, and other artifacts directly from China at the time. It has since been the location for many prominent film premieres and of course has become the place to see celebrity foot and handprints in the concrete outside of the front doors. This tradition apparently was started when enterprising Mr. Grumman capitalized on the fact that Norma Talmadge, a friend of his and a famous silent film star apparently, accidentally stepped into wet concrete in her shoes when visiting him in the theater in 1927. And he then just asked her to put her hands in and sign it and it became the first imprint here. Now the theater inside is unlike any other I've ever been in, and was actually named a historical and cultural landmark in 1968. Since then, it has undergone many renovations and now even has a state-of-the-art sound system that is very, very loud. And after digging up the floor to make room for it, a huge IMAX screen. It's actually the largest IMAX auditorium in the world and welcomes more than 4 million visitors a year. Okay, let's talk about it. The Dynamic Island. The most noticeable difference on the front of the iPhone 14 Pro is the new pill-shaped cutout for Face ID hardware and the camera, which Apple has named the Dynamic Island. Now the cutout is nice and personally looks a bit better than the notch in my opinion, but the reason you've undoubtedly heard about it is because of the UI UX changes that Apple has created around the cutout. So a ton of notifications now use the island and expand from it or pull down from it instead of coming from the very top of the screen. There's also background activities that use the island as well, like music when you swipe away, absorbs into the island, and will show waveforms and album art, timers that are going to do the same with showing you the time remaining, screen recording, incoming and the duration of calls, etc. And you can also tap and hold on it during one of those supported background activities to get a few controls for it without having to open it. And you can just tap it if you want to go back to the app. It'll also show two of the latest supported activities at once, with the second one being a floating icon to the right of it, and you can tap and hold on either for the controls or tap to go into those apps 
like normal. Once you open a third though, it'll remove the one that was opened earliest. Now, honestly, I know it's a small thing, but it does take the cutout and at least incorporate it into the experience. And that subtle thing changes your mentality with it. It feels less intrusive now and it kind of quote unquote serves a purpose. And after using the phone for a bit, I kind of like it. Now, something I don't like as much is the removal of physical SIMs on the US models. So now you have to use an eSIM, which if you're not familiar, is a digital downloaded SIM card. I'm two minds about it, honestly. On the one hand, most US carriers, again, the only place that this is being forced by Apple, can activate eSIMs easily. And Apple, frankly, does make it easy to do during the setup process. But the issue comes in, I think, if you say go overseas and normally would just pop in a local overseas SIM to get much, much cheaper rates for data. But, oh, you don't have a place to put that SIM now. Now, you can, of course, get an eSIM from a carrier over there, but eSIMs just are not quite that prevalent yet. And now Apple doing this, whether you like it or not, will push eSIM tech to be adopted quicker as it's just kind of how things go with Apple. And so sure, there is some of that silver lining for the industry, but there's gonna be probably some issues in the industry. David, I hope you edit this video really well. Aww. Same, David. The future David. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Thanks, guys. Night. Okay. Calling it a night. Now, first, my battery died when we were at the park. So here is my screen on time, my usage for today, for anyone who's curious. Keep in mind though, that obviously today is not a normal day. It is very much a real world test day where I use the camera a ton. So here is another day to compare that to that was a more normal day. Also keep in mind with how Apple likes to show 24 hours of screen on time, you need to subtract the screen on time from the night before to get a more accurate number here. And honestly, I feel like the battery's not as good as last year. It just it just feels like it's dying a lot sooner than the iPhone 13 Pro did. And now I think that might have something to do with the always on display. So here's another day that was a more normal day where I turned that off just to see what the difference was. But well, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed exploring with me and hanging out with some of my friends. If you wanna check out their channels, they all have tech channels as well. I'll leave links below to all of them. There was Mark, Josh, and Isa. They all make great stuff, so check them out. Also, shout out again to Casetify for sponsoring this video. If you want more info on them, there is a link below. Well, there you go. I'm exhausted and I need to catch a flight home tomorrow, so good night. Aggressively hard. Fancy car, that's a Bentley. LA. And welcome to the Andaz. And welcome. People having a good time. They're on vacation. It's a hotel. It makes sense. And Andaz in Hindi means personal style. And so each Andaz hotel around the world. These guys are too loud. They're too loud. Beep, beep, beep. What is that? Truck backing up in the hotel lobby? Great. There was a cart going by or something. I hear it. Oh, there it is. <sighs> Multiple carts. We have the same matte glass in the back that I've always liked. Keys, jingling keys. There are certain sounds that microphones pick up more than others. Jingling keys is one of them. <sighs> now a cart. With jingling glasses, also one of those sounds. <sighs> Why do you film in busy hotel lobbies, David? Why? I don't know. I don't know. I think he's just banging glasses together. He's just really looking at me from across the room and going ding, 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 ding. <laughs> look, mine's, look at mine. What is that? I'd, prefer, I'd rather what that. What is that? I would rather that. 
<laughs> I would rather that hair. Wait, let's try to fix it. Okay. Even though I wish I could cover my big ass forehead, I don't want my hair on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. In order for that. Beep. These jerks are taking photos of me while I film. Oh yeah, that tree's not that interesting. You're not sneaky. You're not sneaky. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> they're all they're all just hiding around the tree, taking photos of me. <laughs> oh yeah, the tree trunk, real cool. Jerk. <laughs> you think I'm in a quiet park, but no. No, there's a very large intersection next to me.